we'd like to welcome you back to part two of our current event and weekly Bible study for March 31st, 2013. And continuing, we're going to switch gears here with a recent National Catholic Review article where they're calling for a repeal of the Second Amendment. Okay, now remember, this is the Catholic, the Vatican, the Pope, and they're integrally yoked up with the New World Order, One World Religion. They're going to be probably at the spear tip of that. So it's no wonder they're not getting in a lockstep like all of the other pseudo-Christian and religions on the planet to say, oh, no, no, we need to ban guns. We need to have a repeal. Nobody has any right to defend themselves. Only the government can be trusted with these things. Because we've seen how well that's worked out when the government takes away all the weapons from the citizenry. Wherever that happens, there's always just mass genocide. I mean, that's all. You just look at Stalin and Pol Pot and Adolf Hitler, you know, Mao Zedong, you know, the whole thing. And every time it's just mass genocide on a unbelievable level. So now we have the Catholic Review in lockstep with them. These are the same people that brought us the Inquisition that killed conservatively at least 70 million people through their Inquisitions and they have their own pedophile priesthood legions. And, you know, so we need to trust them. I mean, they're, they're trustworthy. They've proven that in the past. This is from the, the American magazine, the National Catholic Review. And is, it is a long report with the familiar anti-gun rhetoric. And their conclusion is, Americans must ask. Now this is from the article. Americans must ask, is it prudent to retain a, quote, constitutionally guaranteed right to bear arms when it compels our judges to strike down reasonable, popularly supported gun regulations? Oh yeah, it's so popularly supported, and that's why there's people turning out in absolute total droves at gun shows, and at gun shops, and anywhere that, but they're the government's buying up and destroying so much of the ammo. People know what's coming. All you have to do is look back at history to see what's coming. The pushback is unbelievable, and yet they're saying it's popularly supported gun control legislations. And then it goes on to say, this Catholic review, is it, a, is it, is it moral? They're asking us, they're now the morality police, the pedophile priesthood, the, the authors of the Inquisitions, torture, raping small children in mass through their pedophilic priesthood. So here we have the most wonderful example of a moral compass the world's ever known. The Catholic death cult. Okay, Is it moral to inhibit in this way the power of the country's elected representatives to provide for the public safety It's like just straight out of the fork tongue of, off of Satan's fork tongue. The lies and the hypocrisy that we see here. The author of the article then responds to this, this paragraph by saying, There is nothing reasonable about any steps toward disarmament. It is only reasonable to the tyrant, obviously, who lies until he has total power. It is absolutely moral to inhibit the power of government. And somebody else already came up with 95 reasons to inhibit the power of the Catholic Church. And it has a picture of uh, Martin Luther nailing the 95 thesis to the Catholic Church door. Continuing, the report reads, now this is the report from the Catholic Review, and it says, Does the threat of tyranny, a legitimate 18th century concern, but an increasingly remote, fanciful possibility in the contemporary United States. Trump the grisly daily reality of gun violence? The answer to each of these questions is no, meaning the, the first paragraph I read you and then this one. I'm almost speechless at this last paragraph. Let me just read it again so you can really get the full effect. Does the threat, and this is from the Catholic Review, does the threat of tyranny, a legitimate 18th century concern, but an increasingly remote, fanciful possibility in the contemporary United States, right? That's why Homeland Security has bought all those billions and billions of rounds of ammo and bought the anti-mine personnel carriers and how they're gearing up in every possible way, shape, and form for our destruction. That's all fanciful and such a remote possibility. 
in contemporary United States because we're above that now, right? Does the threat of tyranny a legitimate 18th century concern trump the grisly daily of gun violence? The answer to each of these questions is no. My comment, it is a proven fact that we have documented over and over again that the more law-abiding citizens that possess firearms, the more crime and the murder rates go down. See Kennesaw, Georgia for just one proof of this, where it's a where it's a law or an ordinance that the head of the household of every family there has to have a firearm. Their crime and murder rates went down to almost nothing when after this was enacted. Why? Because it's a deterrent. You're preventing this wickedness and evil from happening. That is a good thing. That is a biblical thing. Okay? I t- I, th- these Catholics, they're just so... I mean, they really are just a mouthpiece of Satan. The more I see come out of their forked tongue mouths, they're just an absolute total mouthpiece for Satan. The author of this article then comments about this last paragraph, and he says, There have been plenty of tyrannies since the 18th century, and the tyrannies since the 18th century have killed many more people. The grisly daily reality of violence is man upon man. The apocalyptic reality of government violence goes far beyond any that is of that scale. In other words, well, we'll get into some of that. Like, you know, Adolf Hitler, (laughs) you know, Stalin, these types of people who kill millions. There's already been concentration camps in the United States. I think he's referring to when World War II broke out, they they took the... uh, Japanese Americans and put them in concentration camps, particularly on the West Coast. Uh, and there was nothing fanciful about that. And they've already got the concentration camps set up now. Most likely over 800 of them. If you refuse to acknowledge the deaths of millions, and if you, are sel- and if you selectively ignore information which disputes your collusion, conclusion, and if you want greater power over the population, then sure, we can see why the Catholic death cult would say these things, because that's what they want. They refuse to to acknowledge the deaths that happened when gun control was initiated, okay, which we've documented over and over again, and they're selectively ignoring information, obviously, and because why? It's disputing their conclusion. Continuing this Catholic report reads... It is time to face reality. So here we have again the moral compass of the galaxy telling us it's time to face reality, the Catholic Church. If the American people are to confront this scourge in any meaningful way, then they must change. See, it's our fault. Sandy Hook was our fault. That was my fault, actually. Aurora shooting, that was my fault. I, I caused that. No, actually, I think it's because both in, in both instances, those were total gun-free zones. So nobody was armed, including any of the, any of the personnel they had there, which allowed the, the shooter to come in wholesale kill everybody. That's the reason it happened. One person with a handgun could have stopped the whole thing or immensely reduced the body count at bare minimum. If multiple people were armed, concealed carry permits or security that had guns, we could have had a zero body count, maybe just the the shooter. If we're to even believe the official narrative of Sandy Hook, which is a total fallacy and joke anyway, again, I could probably do a 10-part teaching on that, just don't have time to, to get into all the lies that were perpetuated with that. So it says, if Americans, if American people are to confront this scourge in any meaningful way, then they must change. See, it's all, it's all our fault. The Constitution must change. Wow! The American people should repeal the Second Amendment. Right from Satan's mouth to our ears, there it is. The American people should repeal the Second Amendment. Now, we're going to keep, if the Lord permits it, having Sandy Hook shootings, those types of events, until they get what they want, most likely. That's what I, I, I see happening. Um, 
fighting this evil tooth and nail up until that point when it won't matter anymore and they're just going to implement what they want, I think should be the right course of action for a law-abiding citizen. I don't mean... I mean fighting it whatever way we can through, like, what I'm doing. Getting the word out. That type of, of battling. I don't mean, like, whatever. But unfortunately, this is where it's this is going. This is obviously what the Illuminati wants. You look back at all the governments, tyrannical governments, throughout the last hundred years alone, we've mentioned them, Hitler, Pol Pot, Stalin, Mao. You know, gun confiscation was the main linchpin for the genocide they perpetuated on their populace. And again, in order to fulfill Georgia Guidestone guidelines by reduce, to reduce world population to 500 million, you're going to have to kill a lot of people. And we would be the first ones they would want to take out. So, hey, absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying he can't protect us though either. You have to have faith to believe that he can protect you no matter what might be coming down. So, then it, it ends this paragraph, the Catholic uh, no, review ends this, par- this paragraph by saying, the American people should repeal the Second Amendment. Okay, my comment, I love it when Satan gives me a lesson in morality, in what is best for the greater good. Don't you love that? Like when Satan does a Bible study, you know, get your hot cocoa with your marshmallows, curl up with, you know, your, your nice warm blankie, you know, on your, wherever you're most comfy in your house, and let Satan give you a nice little Bible tutelage lesson. It should warm the cockles of your heart. I don't know, it does mine. You know, he tried to give Bible lessons to Jesus Christ, didn't he? He just warped all the verses. You know, what he said to Jesus when he was trying to tempt him after the 40 days in the wilderness. That's what he does. He twists scripture. So, the person writing the article, exposing this, says, um, regarding this last statement the Catholic National Review just made, he says, no, that is not reality. That is willful rejection of reality. In other words, everything they're saying, it's like Obama. It's getting to the point where when Obama speaks and when like the Catholic Church speaks, the more wicked the institution, it's getting more where it's just overtly, whatever they're saying, you know it's a lie, and, it's, and whatever the truth is, is the exact opposite of what is coming out of their forked tongue mouths. That's reality. And then he, he posts the Bible verse, Matthew twelve thirty four. Oh, generation of vipers, Jesus Christ, basically speaking to the religious uh, Israelite, religious leaders of the day, O oh, generation of vipers, like snakes, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? This is true. They are pure evil. Here they are the supposed main Christian religion on planet Earth. But how can they, being evil, speak good things? They can't. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Continuing this report, Catholic Report reads, in a recent interview, Tommaso de Ruza, an expert on disarmament and arms control at the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace. Well, isn't that an oxymoron? The Pontifical, meaning the Pontiff, like the Pope, Council for Justice and Peace. (laughs) Like the Catholic Church ever had anything to do with justice or peace. It should be the Pontifical Council for Death and Destruction. It would be a little more accurate. It would be a lot more accurate, actually. Anyway, he examined what an individual does not possess when an individual does not possess an absolute natural right to own a lethal weapon. Oh, good, I'm so glad, again, that Satan is giving me a lesson on morality just because this expert on disarmament and control who is at the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, he says, I don't have an absolute natural right to own a lethal weapon. I mean... Think about that one. Okay, so I don't have a right to have a um, butter knife? Well, a butter knife is potentially a lethal lethal weapon if you use it the right way. You know, you could probably still cut somebody's throat with it if you got in there and saw it hard enough. I mean, what? No, no, it's just guns. 
No, but he says lethal weapon. And then he goes on to say, quote, There is a sort of natural right to defend the common interest and the common good, new, new word order buzzwords, by the limited use of force. But this applies more to nations. Oh, because we know governments can be trusted way more than a law-abiding citizen, right? Yeah, that, the history has proven that one out well, you know. But this applies more to nations, with an effective rule of law, not armed individuals. Oh, really? What, this is the world according to you. The world according to Satan. Thank you. Thank you for giving me your satanic, unbiblical opinion. My comment, these are Catholic pathological liars doing what they do best, whereas the Bible says, Jesus Christ actually speaking to his disciples, and he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. So in other words, he's saying here that this is a priority for you to have a sword. He's saying take your garment and sell it so you can buy a sword. You don't have one. It's that big of a deal. He didn't say this about any other material possession. Jesus Christ. Okay? And then the next verse, and they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. Psalm, verses 5 and 9, I mean, it doesn't sound like Jesus Christ was against it. He said, it is enough. He proved. He said, yeah, it's enough. He says, let him sell your garment if you don't have a sword and buy one. Oh, but he was anti, anti-weapon anti control thing. Oh, doesn't sound like he was here. Sorry. Psalm 98, verses 5 through 9. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. That, that's not even referring to the sword of the Spirit there, which is the Word of God. Okay? That's in their hand. A two-edged sword in their hand. Why would you have the sword? Next verse tells you why. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Now, I'm not saying we're supposed to go out there and hack up the heathen, but this was an Old Testament biblical concept that was clearly conveyed over and over and over again in the Old Testament. Well, why would God wipe up the heathen? Because he knew that when the Jews came into an area, particularly when they were taking the promised land, if they didn't totally eradicate the populace there, which had been prepositioned by Satan in the promised land to frustrate God's plan for them to give them the promised land, they were all put there by design by Satan, all these the races of giants and all the people they battled. Satan has foreknowledge as well. Okay, I, I explained that in the last teachings. He knows the Bible. He has foreknowledge as well. He knew that this was going to happen. So he put all of these wicked people there ahead of time to frustrate and to intimidate the Israelites. And it worked the first time. They went in there, oh, we're as grasshoppers in their sight. We can't beat them. So out of the 12 spies, only two carried back a good report. And the other 10 were like, no, no, we can't beat them. So they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they had no faith. They all had to die out so a new generation could be raised up to actually have enough faith to go into the promised land and take possession of it. That's what a big deal it was. Satan hasn't changed a bit. Anyway, you have a two-edged sword in your hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints... Praise ye the Lord. That's an honor, evidently. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Nehemiah 4.14 And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be, not, be ye not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. Oh, that doesn't sound like a pacifistic stance there. Hmm. Kian, if you don't believe that, Kian, um, Biblical Resistance, or Resistance, 
to tyranny in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. I've gone into this subject many times. So, going further. Um, this is the man commenting on the article, or the man that wrote this article. Uh, what a surprise. A Catholic expert on disarmament says individuals don't have a right to self-defense. That they must be part of a collective. According to this expert on disarmament, an individual life is nothing when compared to the common good or the greater good. An individual has no right to defend themselves with effective tools, so the individual's life is then forfeit, unless the collective agrees. Of course. In the wake of the Newtown shooting... Oh, this is, this is rich. I love this. In the wake of, of the Newtown shooting, Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan said that, quote, the fight for greater gun control in the country is a pro-life position. No, it's not, you fork-tongued devil. It's a pro-death position. Because when they take away our guns, then they're going, you're going to see slaughtering in mass like the United States has never, ever known. But this devil has the audacity to say fighting for greater gun control in the country is a pro-life position. It's the exact opposite of the truth. Why? Because he's of his father, the devil, and of his lust, he will do. He's a good little satanic servant. Then, Cardinal Dolan says, the unfettered access to assault weapons and handguns, along with the glorification of violence in our entertainment industry, is really all part of the culture of death. My comment, notice how this devil, in order to validate his point about gun control, lumps these points all together as if they're on the same level. What do you mean? Well, he's talking about fighter for, for greater gun controls of pro-life position, and then the unfettered access to assault weapons and handguns. Along with, here's where we lump everything together, along with the glorification of violence in our entertainment industry. Well, I agree with that part. The glorif- violence is glorified in the entertainment in- industry, and that's all by design. And you got a guy like Jim Carrey last week saying that, you know, calling all these people that don't want to take you know, that don't want to give up their guns, uh, the, like the worst cuss words you could uh, throw at somebody. And yet he's going to go and star in some movie where he's killing people and shooting people up and, and that type of role. That's okay, though. It's okay for him to do that and to him portray himself that way. But in real life, he thinks everybody should give up their guns and we have no, we have no sympathy on all those uh, poor little children that died at Sandy Hook. Because that's what, no, we do have sympathy on them. And if they were armed there, if there was one armed security guard that could have taken that guy out, if we're to believe that narrative, Lanza, well, he could have stopped the whole thing or greatly reduced the body count. You know? Again, everything that they're for, typically at this point, everything that comes out of their mouth is just a gigantic lie and the opposite of the truth. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And this is what the norm is in today's day and age. So, um, going further here. So, the, the man that wrote the article comments, Oh, really? Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan. Now, now this is really rich. This is really going to... It's going to give you a real feel-good um, type of feeling. He says, oh really, Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan, with a question mark. Hmm, a week before Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan is set to leave uh, New York for Rome, where his name is being floated as a candidate for Pope. So, in other words, this came out a little bit before the, the election for the Pope, okay? He was actually a candidate for Pope, this guy that made the statement, okay? But a week before he was set to leave, for, uh, leave New York for Rome, he was questioned in Manhattan for three hours on Wednesday behind closed doors in a legal deposition concerning the sexual abuse of children by priests. Now, this is the same cardinal devil that is giving us a lecture on morality and gun control and that being a pro-life position, that we shouldn't have unfettered access to assault weapons and handguns, which is also another bunch of garbage because they throw assault weapons out like everybody's carrying around machine guns, which is really the classical definition of an assault weapon would be something that's fully automatic. Meaning, you pull the trigger and bullets are flying on that thing like crazy. Not, you're pulling it one at a time. Guy was on 
talk show the other day I was listening to on the radio, and he's like, listen, when I was over in wherever he was at, Afghanistan, he said, my gun had like three settings, okay? And, you know, he went over the three, and the one that was fully automatic was burst. And he said, I didn't even use that setting the whole time I was in Afghanistan, which was machine gun. He said, it's much more, you're much more uh, better off firing an accurate shot against your enemy than firing a burst like in a machine gun type of thing. So, anyway, that would be considered an assault weapon, okay? Everything else out there, all of the stuff about, you know, these guns, these guns are semi-automatic. They're not fully automatic. But they're trying to lump all that together, like everybody's walking around with machine guns and stuff. And that's lies, more lies, heaped upon more lies. So, good old Timothy... Um, uh, Dolan here, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, was being, you know, interrogated on a legal deposition concerning the sexual abuse of uh, rape of uh, children by priests under his tutelage. This happened for three hours. The lawyers deposing Cardinal Dolan represent hundreds of people who say they were sexually molested by priests in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee just one archdiocese, which he led for seven years before his appointment as Archbishop of New York in 2009. Now, remember what I said about these maggots before? The more wicked, the more evil you are, the more you abuse children, the more you sexually can get away with having your priests abusing children under your watch, the more you will be rewarded. Just like our current Bergoglio devil that's the Pope now. We looked at some of his dirty laundry in that teaching that I did on him and all of the atrocities that were committed as his Archbishop of Buenos Aires or whatever he was in Argentina. All of the garbage that he was surrounding. His collusion with the government. All the people that went missing and died. All the cover-ups, he was, well, he got rewarded. He got promoted to to the Grand Poobah. This guy was, they were considering him him as the candidate. Because look at what, look at the good he did. You know? He only had hundreds of people say they were sexually molested by priests. Now, who knows how many more there were than that. Because a ton of them don't ever come forward. But there were hundreds of people who say they were sexually molested by priests in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, which he led for seven years, this devil, before his appointment as Archbishop of New York in 2009. Well, he got promoted there. Why? Because he did such a good job job protecting his pedophilic priesthood. When he's burning in hell white hot and then cast into the lake of fire, he's going to regret it, but it'll be too late. Then this goes on to say, the lawyers want to know when Cardinal Dolan, as Archbishop of Milwaukee, learned of the allegations against certain priests, and how he quickly made those allegations, and how quickly he made those allegations public. I guarantee you, he covered it up and covered it up as long as you possibly could, and that's why he has been rewarded in this way. He's like Schultz on Hogan's Heroes, where he he was always saying, I know nothing, I know nothing, this is how these guys are. And they're just, they're there to cover up for this legion of pedophilic priests. Probably all of them at the higher levels are of that ilk anyway. I mean, if you're only rewarded by being wicked and to the level of wickedness you can commit and still come out looking like you're this big, pious, holy, Catholic dude, they're like, well, you know, he's got the stuff. He's got what it takes. We're going to promote him to Cardinal. You know? Because on the old wicked meter, you know, he's pegging the pin. He's pegging the pin on the wicked meter. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and promote him. He serves Satan well. He knows how to keep his mouth shut. He knows how to cover up. He knows how to protect these pedophilic priests. And he has no conscience about doing it. That is Catholicism. I love exposing it. I don't do enough to expose it. There, there, there's, I mean, the atrocities that this devil death cult commits on a daily basis 
it's, it's just, it's incomprehensible. So, going further, Cardinal Dolan is one of two American cardinals who are being deposed in sexual abuse lawsuits this week. And then there's a story you can click on. Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan pays off child molesters. Oh, actually, that's his middle name. Cardinal Timothy M. quote, pays off child molesters Dolan. Maybe if he becomes Pope, he could be the first pays off child molesters Pope, you know? Like this one took the name of Francis that had never been taken before. What about pays off child molesters? That could be his name. Be accurate. Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan of New York authorized payments of as much... This is... Listen to this carefully. This is so incomprehensible. I couldn't even believe what I was reading. But this is mainstream news. Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan of New York authorized payments of as much as $20,000. Now, you're thinking, oh, this is going to the the people that got abused, right? This hush money. So they'll keep their mouth shut shut them up. No, no, no. Listen to this. He authorized payments of as much as $20,000 to sexually abusive priests as an incentive for them to agree to dismissal from the priesthood when he was the Archbishop of Milwaukee. He was paying the stinking, demon-possessed, pedophilic priests off. 20,000 bucks to make them step down as an incentive to make them step down. That has got to be one of the most incomprehensible lines I have ever read in all the years that contendingfortruth.com has been in existence, that last line. I couldn't believe it. I had to read it over and over. They're paying the pedophile priests off. To leave. They're not paying the abuse victims. No, they're probably doing that too. Why would you... Is it that the pedophiles go to Dolan in, in their office? and, and I, what, what, was, what, was that, what would that conversation sound like, I wonder? They go in there and they're like, you know, Cardinal... Uh, I realize there's all these allegations. And yes, I've been, I've been sexually molesting little boys... And girls, and, and yeah, I mean, but, oh, it, it's such a racket. It's such a dream job for me to be able to do this and defile all this innocence and to just have my way with them. It's going to take me some, uh, a little more incentive to get me to step down, Cardinal. I'm sorry, but I mean, I got a good thing going here. I'm serving Satan in spades. And I'm having a whole lot of fun while I'm doing it. And then coming off smelling like a rose because everybody bows down to me in the Catholic Church thinking I'm still a holy man. I, I got a good racket going here. And the Cardinal would reply to them by saying, Well, my son, you have done well. You have served Satan extremely well. And he is most pleased with your efforts to defile innocence and the little ones in our church system. But nevertheless... This is getting a little too much press coverage. So I'm going to sweeten the deal a little bit here. And I'm going to give you a cool 20K to grease the skids a little more. So hopefully you won't give me any more resistance about stepping down. Because we're taking a lot of heat here. And we got to get you out of the spotlight. Can you imagine the wickedness of a system that... I, why aren't they all... In jail, why aren't they all spending 30 days in the electric chair? Which would be really too good for them all. These people should be immediately destroyed. I mean, pedophilic priests that are going around molesting children and they're having to be paid off to leave? It's No, 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 they're not going to go to jail. We're going to pay them off. So that they can ride off into the sunset. And so that they they can molest children in in wherever they end up winding up. Because we don't want to take the pedophiles off the, out of the, out of the uh, country or anything like that. No, 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 no. We, we just, they can go do their own thing. They just won't have the Catholic moniker on them as much when they're doing it on their own dime. We just don't want them doing it, you know, they, they, we took a little too much heat for this. I, 
I'm really trying to dramatize this because this, I, I don't think I'm being, I'm over exaggerating here. This is exactly what happened. I mean, if you read between the lines at all. Question at the time about the news that one particularly notorious pedophile cleric had been given a payoff to leave the priesthood. Cardinal Dolan, then the archbishop, responded that such an inference was false, preposterous, preposterous, and unjust. Oh, why? Because you, being a mouthpiece of Satan and a pathological liar, says so? When it's already been documented that you've been doing these things? I mean, it, it's, it's incomprehensible. But a document unearthed during bankruptcy proceedings for the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and then made public by victim advocates reveals that the Archdiocese did make such payments to multiple accused priests. Not the victims, the priests. To encourage them to seek dismissal, thereby allowing the church to remove them from the payroll. And this is in one archdiocese in Milwaukee. One. And it's going on all over the world. All over the world. Key in Catholic. Key in Vatican. Um, Key in Pope. Key in Nun. Because my search will only turn up so many things that I've done exposing Catholicism. If you keyed in all those terms individually, you would have enough listening uh, audios that I've put out to keep you probably occupied for the next month, at least. On all of the atrocities I have documented on this death cult, This is one of the most despicable things. Of all the things I've ever reported on them, this is one of the most overtly despicable evil things I have ever reported on. And then the man writing the article says, I'm going back to what Jesus Christ said. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. They speak of disarmament while they molest children. Yeah, they want to take away our guns. We need to, to, to turn to these people. This cardinal, in particular, is a great example. I want to follow his lead. He's telling us we need to give up our Second Amendment rights. We need to repeal the Second Amendment. We have no right to these things. While at the same time, he is covering up for the most vile, evil, wicked devils that are walking the planet. I believe in God's. I mean, when you when it gets into molesting little children and doing it under the guise of Christianity, it doesn't get a whole lot worse than that. Unless you were turning around and then sacrificing them to, like, Satan. Which I'm sure that goes on at the highest levels in the Catholic Church as well. They speak of disarmament while they molest children. That is the essence of the Catholic Church. They speak of collective rights, which makes the individual defenseless. Absolutely. How can they crank their inquisition up if we're all armed? The second inquisition. You know, they want to bring that back. They reject the facts of what happens when governments become tyrannical. They reject crime statistics they don't like. And then they demand the U.S. change its laws. Continuing with this Catholic report, we read, In the national imagination, the Constitution is too often thought of as a kind of sacred text. Yet neither our founders nor our forebearers Held to that view, the Constitution is yet mere human law. It is an excellent law, but not divine law. It is not revelation. The Constitution is a man-made law of self-governing people. The people, therefore, are entitled to ask, ask basic critical questions about it. In our time, is a given constitutional provision a good law or a bad law? Does it promote the common good? In other words, in our time, because we're at such a wonderfully moral level right now, that it doesn't apply now. We don't need to have the Second Amendment anymore. Obviously, things are so wonderful. Why would we need that? The government is obviously so wonderful and perfect. They would never do anything to harm its populace. So we can do away with the Second Amendment because we're above that. We transcend it now. 
They have the diluted, brain-warped arrogance to make these types of assertions. It goes on to say, in our time, is a given constitutional provision a good law or a bad law? Does it promote the common good? Oh, spoken like Satan himself. The secular dogma of constitutional immutability must yield to careful, critical inquiry. Thank you, Satan, for that wonderful treatise you just spoke there. So the, the man on commenting on the article says, the Constitution is the law of American self-governing people. If you take away the arms of the people, in other words, firearms, they are no longer self-governed. In the environment, in this environment, there is only a government of ruling class who will rule the rest of the people. All you're going to have is tyranny in that. The term, the common good, has for a millennia been the cry of tyrants who oppress the masses. The very people that could care less about the, quote, common good are the one that use the word the most to browbeat the masses, in other words. The Catholic Church inserting itself into science and declaring that only one view of how the world works is acceptable is the main reason Galileo ended up under arrest. Continuing with this Catholic report, it reads, Make no mistake, however, the world we envision is a world with far fewer guns. Oh, I think you've made that abundantly clear. A world in which no one has the right to use one. Oh, unless it's the government, as you've stated before, or nations. Tyrannical nations, because that's all you have now. Essentially, for the most part. They envision a world with far fewer guns, a world in which no one has a right to use one. Just like that gun in front of the United Nations in New York. What, it's like a three fifty seven Magnum a revolver, the big one, and it's got a knot in the barrel. That's the goal, to eliminate all personal firearms. Because they realize that is the absolute linchpin for implementing the New World Order. That's why they have that as their symbol in front of the New York, New York United Nations Center, which is like the headquarters for the UN, the main one. I believe it is. So they, they envision a world where no one has a right to use one. So all our rights to use one, in other words, will be stripped from us. Doesn't sound too tyrannical, right? Then it goes on to say some people, though far fewer, will still die from gun violence. Oh, Really? No, it, yeah, because when you take away the guns, the only ones that have them are the criminals, which will procure them illegally in any way, shape, or form that they can, and the government, which is all, even worse than the criminals. That's what they want. So some people, though far fewer, will still die from gun violence. The disturbing feeling that we have failed to do everything in our power to remove the material cause of their deaths, however, will no longer compound our grief. Yes, I, I am in such agony and grief on a daily basis because I haven't done more to remove firearms out of the law-abiding citizens' hands. And I realize that is the absolute total reason that, you know, Sandy Hook, Columbine, Aurora shooting, all of these mass shootings have taken place. It's my fault because I haven't done more to take away guns from law-abiding citizens. Because obviously, in all those examples... That would have made the difference. Oh, no, actually, it wouldn't have made any difference because these were all MK Ultra mind control slaves, most likely, that were triggered to do this very thing. It's kind of funny, and they always end up in gun-free zones where there's no guns pointing back at them. And whenever there is a gun pointing back at them, their suicide program usually kicks in and they blow their own brains out because deep inwardly, they're either cowards or the programming kicks in. That's a proven fact. Why is it they're always blowing their own brains out when they get confronted at the end? Well, there's nobody to question. I think the Aurora shooter was an anomaly regarding that. Programming didn't quite kick in. Or maybe it was a little defective. I don't know. It's not law-abiding citizens going and doing this kind of garbage. But if there was a gun there... It could have prevented it all. A gun pointing back at the criminal. No, 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 that's not the solution. The solution is to strip them from everybody, but the criminals and our tyrannical government. Oh, that, that is so reasonable. 
That, obviously, that's the solution. I mean, what was I thinking? So, the man writing the article comments, here is the reality, you Catholic devils, that's what I put in there, disarmament leads to genocide, and they know this. And it does so every time, guaranteed, just at different speeds. You know this, and this is the very reason you are pushing for disarmament. Because you are of your father the devil, and of his lust ye will do. I put that in. When one group has uncontested power and authority over another, the weaker is always exploited. Molested altar boys know this. Think about that one. The legions of molested altar boys in the Catholic Church. I wonder how many if you did a head count on that one alone. That's not including all of the other children they have molested in the congregations. What I can't understand is why more men that are in the Catholic Church have just let that go. Oh, Father Flanagan was molesting my little girl. I just found out for five years behind my back. You know what? I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let that one go because I'm going to forgive. We'll forgive and forget. And let him go on his merry way. So he can do it to some more little girls. These are people, these are devils that have 100% forfeited their right to live at all. And yet, they just go on their merry way most of the time. I don't understand why there aren't legions of Catholics that are doing the same exact thing that I am doing and that others are doing, exposing this black death cult for what it is. I just don't understand it. A religious argument for government tyranny is every bit as invalid as a secular one. Exactly. If only there were a crystal clear example of putting power in the hands of one group of a well-meaning religious people that resulted in torture, execution, persecution, and mass murder of people they disliked. This is well-meaning said with sarcasm. Okay. So if there was just one example of a well-meaning sarcasm, religious people that resulted in torture, execution, persecution, and mass murder of people they disliked. There was just one. Oh, but there is! Let's look at the Inquisitions! 70 million, I heard 140 million the other day, conservatively, people not just killed, but killed in the most horrific, perverse, torturous ways. Vile, sexual, evil ways you could imagine. All in the name of of the Catholic religion. And here we have a picture of a woman um, laying on her back, strapped down. She's got all these monks around her documenting everything because they documented these tortures in depth. And this guy has got a funnel down her mouth and he's pouring something into it. This is one of the things they did. They would, they would pour liquids into the funnel to, to fill up their gut until it would literally explode. Yeah, but they did that all for Jesus Christ, they would say. I wonder if you could go down to hell right now and interview them in mass. What they would, how they would, you know, would you, are you happy you were you were serving Satan like that? Did it did it give you? Did it make you just give you goosebumps all over and make you feel all happy inside? Because I guarantee you, these these sick devils loved every bit of it. Most of them, they were that demon possessed to the toenails. You got to be seriously demon possessed to the toenails to do this garbage. They had things, they had torture equipment. I got, I, I documented this. In fact, I give you the, the teaching I did on the Catholic Inquisitions. I've done many, but the one I did, the recent one, I give you the link here. They would literally write like holy names on these torture devices. Some of them they would use to do the most sick things you could possibly imagine to women, to their female parts. And they would have like holy names written on them and, and all of these torture implements. I mean, these people are are beyond, beyond sick, debased, and demon-possessed. And that same spirit hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there just as much as it was back then. They just had the power back then to get away with it. So, 
An update to the story says another point to add that I omitted yesterday. The National Catholic Review's anti-Second Amendment stance also rejects the life of any individual, including the individual Catholic, as worth defending by denying effective tools of self-defense. See, when you have the effective tools of self-defense, if uh, Kennesaw, Georgia, do you know how much less sin has actually been committed in Kennesaw, Georgia, because the criminals know there's going to potentially be, they're going to have to potentially pay with their life if they want to break into a house there, because there's a firearm in every house. Do you know how many less murders, less break-ins, less crime has been committed because of that? Now, is that an evil thing? Or is that a good thing? Is that an unbiblical thing? Or is that a biblical thing? Preventing sin from ever happening in the first place because there is a deterrent in place to do it is a biblical thing. Clearly. (sighs) Unbelievable. Absolutely, insanely unbelievable. Next report. Franklin Graham on the wrong side of Bible and history. This is by Chuck Baldwin. According to Time Magazine, Reverend, which again, that word is only used one time in the Bible, and it's in reference to God. Holy and Reverend is He, meaning God. And yet, all these legions of whatever pastors take on that title. Talk about no fear of God. According to Time Magazine, which is a bastion of truth and wonderfulness, Reverend Franklin Graham and other leading evangelical figures are publicly backing to require background checks for all gun purchases, providing a shot in the arm to the stalled congressional efforts to enact elements of President Barack Obama's gun control plan. So here we have the mainstream corporate whore 501c3 lukewarm devil church yoking up and getting into lockstep with world government and Barack Obama. Graham, the son of evangelist Billy Graham, who I've done a whole study exposing him, and the president of Christian relief organizations, Samaritan's Purse, and Dr. Richard Land of the Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, told Time Magazine they have agreed to back universal background check legislations put forth by the administration in the wake of last year's shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. My comment, even if we were to believe the official narrative provided to us by the mainstream media, Adam Lanza stole the guns he used from his mother. He stole the guns. So what good would a background check done on Adam Lanza? Criminals will always steal the guns they need to get to commit the crimes they want to commit. And again, it was all staged anyway. So the background checks would have really helped in this case. Sarcasm. So this goes on to say, as ministers, we agreed together that we could stand on a united front for universal background checks. Uh, Graham told Time Magazine, noting he had many conversations with civil rights leader Reverend Amos Brown on the subject. And he said, quote, we think that's reasonable and responsible. Well, thank you, you fork-tongued devil. Thank you. Thank you for speaking on behalf of all Christianity as a satanic mouthpiece. You are serving your father, the devil, Satan, so well and so amply. And I just, I'm sure he's so proud of you. You and Billy both. Anyway... If you want to see my teachings on the 501c3 Corporate Churches of America, I provide you a link here so you can kind of get a flavor on, you know, how they're going to just continue this whole lockstep with the world government and with whatever world government wants, they're going to get behind. Hey, they got to pay them back for all this 501c3 tax exemption stuff they've they've gotten. I mean, Caesars are going to call in the chips. There's going to be a price to pay for all that. So, you can see the time report of Franklin Graham Back's Universal Background Checks. There's a link here. And then, um, uh, uh, Chuck Baldwin then goes on to comment by saying, My disappointment and even anger at Mr. Graham's endorsement of universal background checks cannot be put into words. 
When America falls into tyranny and oppression, it will be with the help and the assistance of the likes of Franklin Graham and Richard Lane, and so many more. So many more, though. In fact, it is no hyperbole to say that pastors and Christians all over America are facilitating their own slavery. They're funding their own destruction, and they're facilitating their own slavery. Adolf Hitler would have never been able to become Fuhrer of Germany without the collaboration and cooperation of Germany's evangelical pastors and churches. That's a fact. It is an absolute truth that the blood of Hitler's victims flow to the doorsteps of Germany's churches. There were some 14,000 evangelical churches in Germany at the time of Hitler and his fellow Nazis were rising to power. Out of those 14,000 pastors and churches, only 800 had the courage and um, had the courage to oppose Hitler. That equates to 5%. 5% of the churches. We wouldn't even have that today, I don't think. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Graham and Land are either totally ignorant of the meaning and ramification of universal background checks, or they're willing participants in America's subservience to an ever burgeoning police state. No, 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 no. I don't think they're. I don't think they're that dumb. I don't think they're. I wouldn't give them that much credit. No, no. They're willing participants in America's subservience to ever burgeoning police state. Remember, most of the people at this level are Satanists, or Luciferians, or involved in the occult, or in some level, high-level secret society. There were many reports, well, Louisiana had its own, had Billy Graham as a 33rd degree Freemason. I mean, it was just one of the, the famous Freemasons in Louisiana. Until they took, well, until they had all this heat and they took it down. I've seen the people that have mirrored that website of him. Well, you got to do some nasty stuff to be a 33rd degree Freemason. I mean, it's basically selling your soul to the devil, pretty much. <laughs> Whether you want to admit that or not. And it's, obviously, these people are put there for a reason. All of these televangelists, pretty much universal. Greed-driven people that have sold their soul to Satan to get into that position. Closet Satanists. I've documented this over and over and over again. So this doesn't surprise me a bit that this is all happening. So either way, they are both on the wrong side of Bible and history. This is back to the report. Let's be clear about what is being proposed. President Barack Obama and his gaggle of gun grabbers are trying to accomplish three things. They want all semi-automatic rifles, basically banned. They want all they want to ban all high capacity magazines, probably anything over seven rounds. Why? Because then you won't have as many bullets to shoot back at them with. They want to take away your means of self-defense because they're coming to get you. It's just a matter of time. Now, I'm not saying this to decrease your faith in God. I'm just saying that's what they want to do. And they want you to be as ill-equipped as possible so they'll have the least amount of resistance when they come in for the whole gun confiscation. And you won't be able to defend your family or anything. That's why. It's disarmament. Which is the precursor always to mass genocide in these governments. Number three, they want to ban the right of individuals to freely buy and sell the personal firearms. The third initiative is commonly called universal background checks. This is what Graham and this land guy are so much behind. But what it would actually do is prohibit private citizens from being able to freely buy and sell their own personal firearms. This is an egregious assault against both the right to keep and bear arms and the private ownership of personal property. Should this universal background check become law, it would be a crime for individuals to buy or sell a firearm without filling out a government form similar to the one firearm dealers are required to fill out, which equates to asking the state for permission to purchase a gun. So you got to go to the government for everything if they enact this universal background check, supposedly. I've got a feeling there's going to be uh, a ton of people that are going to ignore it, but... You know, in essence, private citizens would be subject to all the laws and penalties as our gu- licensed gun dealers. So you're basically now, you want to sell any firearm, you're basically in the same boat as a licensed gun dealer. Can you imagine? A father would not be able to freely pass down a cherished family firearm to his children. People would not be able to freely exchange firearms in either a gift or purchase form. You couldn't give them as a gift. 
You'd have to fill out all kind of paperwork. And the government would know exactly who's got what firearm where. Now, also, if they enact this, think about this. The main reason they want to do this is that would mean everybody would have to go in in mass to register all your firearms. So they know exactly who's got what and where they got it. That's why. Can you imagine if everybody were to comply, which that's not going to happen. Okay, that, this is a this is a linchpin deal breaker issue here. Okay, I, I believe that civil war would break out before the the country would go along with this in mass. Maybe a bloodbath, no doubt, most likely. Um, but can you imagine the the unbelievable? If everybody were to go, if everybody were to comply with this, I mean. <sighs> It's not going to happen, but I'm just saying, the, 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 I, I can't even imagine. So, going further. People would not be able to freely exchange firearms in either gift or purchase form, and anyone attempting to buy or sell a firearm would become an agent of the state. Exactly. Everything needs to be turned into a big brother process. Everything. So they know everything about you in every way, shape, or form. You have no right to your own privacy at all. Furthermore, instituting a universal background check system would create a national database of all firearms bought and sold in America. That's the main reason. Ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing more than a backdoor to universal gun registration ploy. Yeah. They want to have all the guns registered. Every gun owner in America would be entered into a giant national database akin to the system proposed by Adolf Hitler and virtually every other tyrant dictator in modern history. And any honest student of history knows gun registration always is a precursor to gun confiscation. Always. The handwriting's on the wall. History's there to prove this out over and over and over again. And what does that lead to? What does gun confiscation lead to? Mass genocide of the populace. Period. That's why I keep saying this is, this is such a deal breaker, linchpin issue. Do Mr. Graham and Mr. Land truly understand what they're endorsing? Do they understand that they are cooperating with one of the most devilish attacks against the liberties and freedoms of the American people since before our war for independence? If they do, they should be totally ashamed of themselves and they should also be forever identified as a traitor to the cause of liberty. Right now, all three of Obama's gun control proposals are facing fierce opposition. Will the endorsement of Franklin Graham and other evangelical leaders be the catalyst for all or parts of these proposals becoming law? If so, history will look back on Mr. Graham and Mr. Land's endorsements in the same light as we now look back at the utter gutlessness and stupidity of those clergymen in the Nazi-era Germany who rolled over for Hitler's Third Reich with the utmost contempt. I cannot speak for anyone else, of course, but as for me, I have had it up to my eyeballs with these holier-than-thou, constitutionally naive, politically correct, compromising, yellow bellies, spineless, sucking up to the power preachers. They are selling our liberties into the hands of tyrants. They are culpable in the death and destruction of the American Republic as any big, as is, as is any big uh, government politician. No, they are more cul culpable. They are deceiving tens of millions of Christians into going along with these incessant assaults against our own liberties. In the name of God is in control, or Jesus is coming soon, or God hasn't called me to get into, involved with politics, these preachers are facilitating the destruction of America. And when they do decide to jump into politics, they are like Franklin Graham, endorse some stupid big government unconstitutional, tyrannical proposal such as universal background check bill. If they are going to get involved in politics, why don't they read the Constitution first to try to help the cause of liberty once in a while? But no, when they do decide to leave their ivory palaces and dirty and dirty their lily white hands with politics, they come out in favor of bigger and more intrusive government. Because they're all on the same side. Working for the same thing. One world government, one world political system, one world economic system, one world monetary system. All under Antichrist and false prophet. Think about it. If Barack Obama and Franklin Graham have their way, and they're on the same side in this issue, any person who tries to buy or sell a firearm without Big Brother's oppressive oversight would be treated as a crack cocaine or a heroin dealer. <laughs> yeah. 
Think about it. Jesus commanded his disciples to purchase a sword. Luke twenty two thirty six. 36. Not only that, it was against... Now listen to this. This is very interesting. Not only did Jesus command that, but it was actually against Roman law at the time for Hebrews to carry the Roman sword when Jesus issued his instructions. Think of that. Jesus commanded his disciples to break the law and to buy a sword. Plus, at the time, Jesus told his disciples to arm themselves. Two of them, one of whom was Simon Peter, had already purchased and were carrying their personal sign arms. How long had they, and which are, were, were the, the handgun of today? Okay? That was their main weapon to protect themselves. Okay? Not to say God can't protect you, but in this particular case, it's what we're talking about. How long had they been carrying those weapons? Uh, for nearly all the four years of Jesus' public ministry? We are not told, but we do know that two of the disciples were armed before Jesus told the rest of the disciples to get armed. And Jesus knew they were armed and fully approved of them being armed. And you can be sure of this. Jesus was certainly not endorsing a universal background check for the disciples because it was against the law for them to possess such weapons. But Jesus knew that we had a right to self-defense, to defend our families, ourselves, which is biblical. The Bible says, He that provideth not for his own house is worse, has denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. Providing that word, if you go into the Greek and look at that word, part of the providing is not just putting food on the table, or putting a roof over the head, or, you know, Three, bare, three, three squares of bed and a roof over your head, as some call it. It's not just that. It's also protecting. I mean, you just provide for them and let people come in and rape, kill, and per- pillage your family? Well, yeah, but I put food on the table. I mean, I don't want to go against wickedness, though. I want to let them just come in and kill my family. Isn't that reasonable? No, obviously That word, provide, in the Greek, when it talks about that, is also protection of your family. Jesus was not for endorsing, obviously was not for endorsing a universal background check for the disciples because it was against the law for them to possess such a weapon. If Franklin Graham and Richard Land properly understood their Bibles. And if you think that Romans 13 is the justification that we obey whatever the government tells us, key in Romans in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com, and we will dispel that very quickly. Because that's only when the government is being used for good. That is, it, it, it totally prefaces that. If a wicked, tyrannical government, Romans 13 does not apply to. Okay? It doesn't. It's just common sense if you compare scripture with scripture and you divide the the word of truth rightfully. So, if Franklin Graham and Richard Land properly understood their Bibles and the teachings of Jesus instead of promoting bigger and more oppressive government via a universal background check system, they would be telling people to go buy a firearm and forget about submitting to any governmental background check. Are Franklin Graham and Richard Land not familiar with the fact that the presence of a firearm prevents a crime and prevents potentially saves a life over 2.5 million times every year in this country? The presence of a firearm prevents crime and potentially saves a life of over 2.5 million people every uh, time, times every year in this country. I saw this video montage the other day of crimes that were on video that were thwarted by one, usually one person with a small caliber handgun. These criminal devils come in and and with their guns and when they're shot back at, you see the absolute lily-livered yellow cowardice come out in them most of the time. Because they can't hit that door quick enough. It is hilarious, actually, to watch it in action. Criminals don't want you to be armed. Now, all of the deaths that have been prevented, the murders and deaths and agony and misery that have been prevented by people possessing firearms in those situations, it's incalculable. 
on, on by our standards. I mean, God can calculate it, but I couldn't. That's just further proof of this. So, if they're interested in saving lives and making America a safer place to live, they would be advocating for more and freer gun possession. In the recent killing sprees that everyone uses as justification for more gun control, had someone or a group of people been armed, the casualty list would have most have certainly been a lot shorter, if, if any at all, other than the shooter. And the reason that people in those venues were not armed was because there was a stupid, nonsensical, asinine governmental law in place requiring them to be unarmed. These are the gun-free zones. A report came out the other day that somebody put up in some school system in the Midwest. They showed the schools, they had like a red dot, a green dot, and a gray dot. And they, what they did is they raided all the schools. And the green dot were the schools that had some type of armed security. The red dots were ones that had none. And the gray dots, the schools wouldn't respond. So most likely they didn't have any security either. And there was this gigantic, huge... Um, cries, I believe, from the Democrats, the leftists, over them publishing this. Because they're like, no, 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 you can't publish this type of information. Why? I mean, if, I don't, I wouldn't advocate public schools, but if you had your child in a public school, I'd much rather they be in a public school that had some type of armed security at this point. Okay, to prevent a Sandy Hook type event, which are absolute mad. Well, what's wrong with publishing that information? Well, then, then the criminals will know that, yeah, exactly. So why aren't they all armed? It just proves that they don't believe their own lies and their own garbage and their own propaganda. The left. There was there was a, a person. I, I think it was on Sean Hannity not too long ago. <laughs> they went to this this guy who posed as an ultra ultra anti Second Amendment liberal. Posed, but he really wasn't. He was, I think, the exact opposite. He went to like some governor's house or some some senator, some governor who had just enacted this mega 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 gun control legislation, and he was trying to put signs in the governor's front lawn saying, this is a gun-free house. <laughs> and the security guards came out, and they were like, hey, listen, we're, we're, we're really kind of like for what you're doing, but we can't have you putting those here. And, and, and they, were like, they were like, well, why? But you are gun-free. You, 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 you enacted all this legislation to take away our guns, and, and so you need to take a stand and say that you're gun-free. So all the crim- you know, basically all the criminals know. And they were like, oh, no, 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 no. We, we don't want those in our front yard. Why don't all the liberals have those, those signs? I'm, pr- I'm gun-free and I'm proud, you know? I'm gun-free and I'm proud. Come and kill me and my family. Rob, pillage, steal, take whatever you want, Mr. Criminal, because we're here to serve you. They would never think of doing that. Why? Because they do not believe their own lies and propaganda and garbage. They just want to take the guns away from the law-abiding citizens while they're armed to the teeth and have their security details and these types of things. Like so many of these Hollywood actors, like Charlie Sheen and these types, saying, yeah, we need to take away the guns, we need to have guns. And he's got armed security details following him everywhere. There's no, there's no hypocrisy there. I mean, you know, there's none at all. You know, do as I say, not as I do, essentially. So this is what we're dealing with, this, this kind of insanity. So, going back to the article, furthermore, Franklin Graham and Richard Land, not familiar with history, are they unaware that tyrants and butchers of history have all used gun registration as a precursor to gun confiscation? Are they unaware that gun confiscation always precedes genocide and mass murder? Oh no, they're doing it to save lives. Yeah, wait till you see when it's enacted and see how many people die as a result of it. Then probably the liberals or whoever might might have a, a crisis of conscience will see, you know what, I was for the very thing that I shouldn't have been for. I was for the very thing that was a means of destruction of humanity at large. Wow, bummer for me. I kind of found out a little too late, though. You know, golly, what am I going to do? Instead of calling for universal background checks, Franklin Graham should be shouting for government to abandon their gun-free zones and demand that people be allowed to universally defend themselves. And imagine how many deaths that would prevent. Instead of coming to the aid of big government zealots who desire to trample constitutional liberties, Franklin Graham should be shouting 
for the president and the members of the U.S. House and Senate, including Dianne Feinstein, oh, she's so vile, to abide by their oaths to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and keep their grubby fingers off our gun rights. I further suggest that Franklin Graham and Richard Land obtain a copy of my new book entitled To Keep or Not to Keep, Why Christians Should Not Give Up Their Guns, which is co-written by my constitutional attorney's son, Tim. We delve deeply into the Old and New Testaments and conclusively show that nowhere does the Bible teach that Christians or anyone else... um, should ever surrender their firearms in the face of a would-be tyrant, and nowhere does the Bible teach gun registration or universal background checks or anything of the sort. Anyway, there's a link to his book if you want to go buy that. Um, All men, not just Christians, are given unalienable, God-given natural rights to self-defense. So anyway, um, I give you that link as well. Okay, I'm over time here, so I'm going to go to part three next. God bless you.